Doctor Strange. You think you know how the world works? What if I told you the reality you know is one of many? This doesn't make any sense. Not everything does. Not everything has to. So, I know I'm not gonna just put you in a box and say you're a horror director, but I mean, you've done a lot of horror movies and like, what was the jump to go from there and to, to be in this fraternity of, of Marvel Universe directors? Like, it, it, it wasn't as extreme of a jump as you would think because of the nature of Doctor Strange, you know? I don't think there's another Marvel comic I'm personally suited to do, but horror works at least in my experience as a director, when you've got real actors and real grounded characters and you create real drama and then usher them into the fantastical, that's how they work. Yeah. And uh, and this is the same way, you know, you've got, I've got actors who are world-class actors and I'm bringing them into incredibly surreal, psychedelic, fantastical stuff by the end of the movie. Yeah. So it's the same approach, real drama, real characters to start with and then sort of move them into the, into the supernatural. Now, Easter eggs are like a, a staple of the Marvel Universe, and of course I'm not going to spoil the, what the Easter egg is in, in this one, but did y'all start that before the movie, or is this, this already in the concept and the script of what this Easter egg is going to be, or how does that become directed into it? They, they, they just sort of emerge organically. You know, sometimes they, they don't even start, sometimes they don't even start as Easter eggs. They start as something else, and then you decide, oh, we'll leave it in as, e as an Easter egg, you know, okay. that kind of thing. Um, but you, uh, y you can't, you can't prioritize those at all while you're writing the movie and shooting the movie. You just only prioritize making the best possible movie and that stuff is kind of slid in. I know that you're also a man of faith and for I hear that you put like your money and resources into it to trying to you know become this director for this movie. Were you getting a lot of detractors say, look, hey, don't spend all your money on this and don't don't do that for this. This job, no, right? I didn't ask anybody. I mean, the only person, the only person I told how much I was spending was my wife, you know, <laughs> and she supported me. Yeah. I, it, it was I did it out of conviction, you know. I I I I really felt like I was the right guy to do the job, and 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 I knew that I was in a dark horse, you know. Yeah. I'm not the obvious choice, and James Gunn wasn't the obvious choice for Guardians of the Galaxy, and the Russos weren't the obvious choice for Winter Soldier. But to get the job when you're not the obvious choice, you've got to show and demonstrate more than everyone else. Yeah. And after I met with them the first time and understood that they liked the idea of making a psychedelic movie about spirituality, yeah. I was like, I'm the guy. I got to be the one to do this. And so I put my money where my mouth is and, and spent that. And I just thought I'm going to out, out, outright them. I'm going to outright everybody. I'm going to out... out uh, uh, spend everybody, I'm gonna out-present everybody, and, and I just brought my A game. And I knew that if I didn't get the job after that, you know, I, would, I left it on the field. I, yeah. would, I wouldn't regret it. Well, nobody's gonna regret that you're the director of this. Great job. Thank you appreciate so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you.